Hello, this is Dan Danielson, and welcome. Today, I'm going to paint a watercolor of, of the king of the jungle. Whenever I, I paint an animal, I always look beyond, beyond the anatomy and the form and the figure and, and try to look to the spirit of the animal and try to capture the characteristics, uh, uh, the style, the freedom. And this particular lion I spotted in a local museum and it was a stuffed animal, and uh, it had the energy that it, uh, kind of attracted me to it. I took a photo of it, and I brought it back. And um, the, the starting point of, of any watercolor really is, is, is looking at and studying it and uh, noticing, you know, first of all, the light and the shadow. And I always do a little value study first, and it's just a quick pencil drawing. But it shows me uh, where the light is coming from and uh, where the shadows are, are falling on the form. It's important to follow the uh, light and shadow because that's going to give you dimension. Uh, that's what's going to give you um, the overall shape. So when I start out with, uh, with a watercolor, I always have that uh, value study. And then I just start blocking in some with a big brush, big brush, some of the uh, bigger areas, um, I look at where the light is at. In this case, the light's coming from, from up above. So um, I started with uh, warm colors on top. And then as I come down, um, I start getting a little cooler in color. Um, put some greens and some blues in there, kind of mix them together. And just let them mix uh, wet into wet uh, with a big brush. And, uh, you know, do, do it quickly, um, but don't hurry. Most important thing is just to study where the, where the light areas are at and the medium uh, value areas are at. Um, that's probably the most important thing. Don't, don't, don't even think about, you know, the, uh, the anatomy as, as far as uh, the eyes and the nose and the mouth and, you know, and, and that. You're looking at just uh, light and shadow. Um, now here, where I'm, I'm coming down to the side into the shadow area, so I'm um, using a lot of blues and cool colors. So the light is represented by warm colors, yellows, and then down below in the shadow area, I um, have a lot of uh, the cooler blues. And I'm um, using a big brush. Now, this demo, actually, I, I speeded up the demo, so <laughs> it does look like I'm painting. I don't really paint this fast. But I did speed it up, so um, it looks like it, it is going a little faster than, than I actually paint. So right now, uh, when it's wet, I'm dropping in um, some instant coffee for texture. Basically, it's, <laughs> it's Nescafe dry coffee. And uh, if you sprinkle in the granules into the, into the water, it will then dissolve. It gives some really neat, uh, really some nice textures. Um, let it let it kind of let the uh, the instant coffee kind of dissolve uh, right into the water, and then while it's still wet, I go back with a with a dry brush and I'm pulling out some of the pigment just to give it a little more um, some light air er light areas. Um, I'm just you know just wiping up some white areas just to lighten up certain uh, of the areas that are um, a little more. Um, in the sunny area, and um, I keep going back and forth. Now I'm just coming back, and I'm just gonna pull out some, uh, just some lines of light, just capturing the energy that um, that we hope we we can see in there. Anyway, um, here again, I have the photo. I'm following uh, the photo. And um, I also am following my value study. Um, so I got both of them on the side. And uh, if you notice, look at my, the, the mixing tray. It's really kind of, kind of a neat area because I have, uh, in the mixing tray, I have like an area that's kind of warm. And I also have a, an area that's cool. The color is kind of mixing together. So my mixing tray actually looks very similar to the colors um, and the way they're laid out as on the, on the painting itself. 
So here I'm just kind of coming in while it's still wet, um, just kind of an underpaint under uh, painting, and it doesn't really look like much. Uh, the only thing you really that I'm looking for is light and shadow, um, and, and try to get that uh, that dimension overall. And um, notice down down below the, the coffee uh, granules are starting to dissolve a little bit. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, it really it has a nice, uh, it's a nice way to get uh, some texture, um, especially in, in an animal like this with the fur. I'm going to make a little cleaner space here. I'm going to kind of uh, start, now maybe work on the, uh, um, the mouth area now. So now that I have kind of the medium and light uh, value areas. Uh, top of the head is light, the side and down below is a little cooler. Uh, I'm thinking about the area that's in the mouth area. Um, that's really all gonna be a, a, a real dark area, but I'm gonna start out with kind of a little lighter, uh, warm color in the mouth. And um, just trying to just Dropping it in, and I'm going to add a little uh, uh, value to to give it a little more depth um, on the on the inside. So I have uh, alizarin crimson, and I'm using phthalo blue and alizarin crimson together. It gives you a really nice nice purple. And uh, then I look back at my value study, and you notice it's really dark in there, so. I'm just going to keep building up some uh, colors and values in that area. Now, a lot of times when you take a photo of something, you really can't follow the photo for color. Because if you follow the photo for color, you're, you're really kind of going to be disappointed. Uh, you can follow the photo for the shape um, and the drawing, make sure it's accurate. But color has to come from you, the artist. And uh, in the photo, you know, you don't see all these colors. Um, it, it just shows you the, the values. But uh, the colors come from, from your own feeling, your own style. Um, and it's really, that's what gives, that's what watercolor really is all about. It's, it's the loosening. You know, people say, well, they like watercolors because they like it. They like the looseness and, uh, and, and how fluid it is and how dynamic it is. And, and uh, that, really has to, that really has to come from you. You have to make that work. The photo is pretty dark, pretty black, really, um, the reference photo. So you have to add those lively shadows. Um, and not just because it's black on the photo or gray. You don't have to follow that. You um, be a little adventuresome with your color and let them mix together. It'll dry a little lighter too. But now you can see I'm uh, just adding a little more uh, value, darkness into the, the, uh, the mouth area. Um, whereas the other, the rest of the, uh, the painting is it's still kind of drying. And have a smaller brush, but still, still kind of a big brush. You have a, Use a nice big brush as much as you can um, with a nice point on it. And um, that way you have the benefit of, uh, of some nice big broad brush strokes. And um, if it has a nice point, you get some nice thin, um, thin lines too. But uh, if you notice, there's, you know, there's no eyes, there's no nose. I don't, don't, don't even think about um, kind of the features of the face. Um, but right now I'm starting to put in some dark values into the mouth there. And you kind of see it starts taking shape then. It kind of gives it more dimension. Um, so I start with, uh, with the, some darker areas um, in the mouth area. Now I'm going to go back and I'm looking around. I'm thinking, um, what next? Well, I probably should put in the, maybe the eye just kind of Start uh, it starts coming alive sometimes when you start putting in these features eventually. Um, and so I'm looking at where the eye goes. And 
Here you have to look at your reference photo because you want to make sure you get the, the, uh, the drawing right and the shape of the eyes and all that. Um, so um, I'm kind of looking at the reference photo and uh, get an idea where it's the placement of the, uh, the eye and, you know, the relationship to the other features. And um, here, here you have to just, has to be somewhat accurate. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate because uh, um, the overall feel is really what's more important than the accuracy. And uh, here again, I look at my uh, uh, value study. Um, that's kind of my, the, the, the uh, blueprint, you know, the, the roadmap that I'm following. And keep everything real loose, nothing, nothing real tight. Just let it loose. Let it um, put down the brush strokes and let the let the colors just mingle together. Um, that that's the that's the fun part of it. Let the let the watercolor do its job. Um, you don't have full control over it, so you know don't worry about that. No, just kind of doing some little mixing here. I got the thalo blue again. One of, I'm using thalo blue, really a great color to. Get a nice rich darker value um, and I'm kind of again going back and look at the reference photo and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking oh yeah I'm just trying to get it in with a couple of brush strokes don't go back and forth back and forth and don't worry about if it's not perfectly accurate that's okay but then you start seeing it seeing it uh, kind of takes takes shape once you start putting in some darker values because you got the the white of the paper is the high, you know, the, the lightest you can go is the white, obviously. And then uh, um, we put down the medium values and um, the uh, lighter values early when we're painting. And I put in some dark values. So now we have the whole range of values on the, on the painting. Now I'm coming in with some dry brush just for some texture. Uh, I'm taking a, a brush with less water, more pigment, and I'm using the side of the brush. I'm just picking up some of the pigment with the side of the brush and kind of just uh, just scraping across the surface and uh, kind of gives you some nice nice texture on, on the sides. Now um, I, I have now I I grabbed a uh, I'm using a thinner brush now because there's a you know I, I want to get the 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 eye has to be right, so I just kind of a little more, a little more accuracy on the eye, just to make it a little darker. So now I'm starting to put in some darker values, and um, that, that's kind of when it starts coming alive, so to speak, when you start putting the eyes and the features. But you don't want to do that too soon. You want to get the overall big shapes uh, first, because that's really what what makes the uh, what really makes the painting, but it's the uh, the eyes and the mouth. Obviously, gives gives it expression, um, and that's what I like to capture is the emotion um, uh, of whatever the animal is. Um, it's you know, and and how it connects with nature. You know, this is a this is a great kind of a stuffed animal, like I mentioned up at uh, at a local museum, and. Um, there are some other animals there too, which really, um, really very expressive, and that's that's kind of what uh, what I try to capture is its temperament and personality and energy. That's what we try to capture, um, no matter what. Now, here I'm just kind of lifting some of the some of the color around the eyelid. I have a little scrubber brush, and if you wet the paper, you can scrub it a little bit, and then pick up a little. You don't you don't want to do that too often, but every once in a while you can do that. Um, and see see the eyelid area kind of gives you a nice uh, a light area on top of the eye and then underneath the eye, um, kind of gives it some nice um, shape to that whole area. And then I kind of come back. I'm just adding a little some accents um, to the nose area. Now, also if you notice the uh, the teeth are. Um, I, I use some masking fluid on on the teeth. Um, there's four teeth there, two of the big teeth anyway. So that uh, there's masking fluid there, so I can just paint right over 
right over them, not have to worry about painting around them because I want the teeth to be to be lighter um, than the uh, than the background. So once this the paint uh, watercolor is dry within that that mouth there, and then I kind of come back and I kind of lift lift out that masking fluid. But right now I'm kind of just darkening in. Um, a little bit more, um, get it uh, so it looks like, uh, you know, there's some depth to the uh, the overall uh, shape in the mouth area. Now that's dry, I'm going back with a, uh, a rubber cement pickup, and I'm starting to pick up, I'm rubbing off uh, the masking fluid. And uh, masking fluid comes off, and it, it reveals the uh, the white of the paper underneath, so that um, you have some nice pure white um, paper underneath. And uh, on this particular paper, it's a rough paper that I'm using here, so this uh, masking fluid does not come off real easy. That's why I'm kind of struggling a little bit trying to get that masking fluid off. Because this particular paper, uh, the masking fluid really sticks really well, and it's a little more difficult to uh, to get off. Normally, a, a regular paper um, it comes off real easy, but this rough paper, um, it it takes a little uh, some effort to get that masking fluid off, but it comes off. But um, and then I. Th think what I'm going to do when you look at it, you know, the, obviously the, the teeth are real, um, real white now and they look kind of almost artificial. Um, good whitening, good whitening toothpaste to get your teeth really white like that, but it doesn't look real. So I'm going to just come back now and uh, maybe just darken down the, uh, the teeth a little bit so that they seem to just fit in a little bit better. So you don't look too uh, too artificial. It's kind of fun. You just kind of just play with it a little bit, and uh, you know, you, just, you try to paint them so they seem to fit within the shadow area of the of the mouth area. You just take your time, and um, more detail at this time. Here again, my mixing tray. I, really, I always like to look at the. That's why I include the the mixing tray on this demo because it's always it's always nice to watch what's going on um, in the in the in the mixing tray with all the paints. And you kind of see some really nice some nice colors just mingling together. And that's what you try to try to accomplish on your painting. Um, sometimes I really like what's going on in the mixing tray, and I try to get that same feel on the painting itself, that real nice dynamic fluid looseness. Um, so you kind of see, I'm just kind of picking up different, uh, different cool colors. And they don't have any black. I don't have any black on my uh, color palette. I, if I want a dark color, or if I want black, I just make my own black, make my own grays um because you get some really interesting grays that way um and you can get a really nice rich black and different types of uh, grays cool grays warm grays uh, much better than if you just buy a tube of gray or a tube of black um it's, it's not as exciting as uh, if you make your own colors and it's it's a good it's a good habit to get into mixing your own colors a little bit more so if you want a nice black just pick up a blue you know a, uh, phthalo blue or ultramarine blue and mix that with uh, some uh, burnt umber. Boy, you get uh, a nice rich black. Now, you don't want to use it all. You know, just use it as accents of black. That's all. So a lot of times with a, with a painting, it's not so much what you put into a painting. It's, it's what you leave out. Um, so you kind of, you study, you take your time at, at the beginning of a watercolor, 
pretty much just, everything's real loose and fluid. That's the way it should be. You know, big brush, real fluid. Um, then as you go along, you kind of tighten up. Brushes get a little smaller, and you just kind of then know when to stop. So now I'm starting to think about, okay, what am I going to do with the background, you know? Um, so on my value sketch, I know I had a uh, kind of a darker background. So here I am, I'm mixing. I'm just taking all my colors, oh, all kinds of colors in the my uh, mixing tray. I'm kind of mixing them all together, kind of coming up with a neutral gray. Um and um, can I, I'm doing a, like a cool gray. And I'm just going to uh, just start and just, just kind of come around the shape and just some nice big broad brush strokes and um, nice neutral, kind of a cool gray. And if you get the value right, try to hit it the first time. Try to get that value the first time. Um, and, you, and, and, and what'll happen is then the, uh, the subject itself will just pop right off of the page, you know, just come right out at you. Just put down some big, broad brush strokes. And, uh, don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes we're too timid. Sometimes I get too timid, so I have to make sure you... Tell yourself, oh yeah, let's just uh, let's just go go a little uh, more, be a little more brave, you know, with some big brush strokes, and then that's where that's where it really comes uh, shows up as a really nice watercolor. And leave some white. You always gotta leave white of the paper someplace. Now here I'm just kind of. Taking time, looking at it, and uh, then no one to stop. And um, that's it. The king of the jungle. Capturing the energy.